Many dry cargo vessels are fitted with pedestal-mounted rotating cranes, which allow self-loading and discharge of cargoes. The slewing bearing is a highly loaded component, often running in difficult conditions and can fail rapidly. Catastrophic slew bearing failure of such cranes remains an ongoing issue and can lead to severe injury and fatalities. Other unwanted consequences can include damage to third-party property, reduced charter rates, legal disputes, loss of reputation, substantial repair costs, lengthy delivery times of spare parts, hire of shore cranes, time off hire. To identify a failing slewing bearing, regular tilt clearance measurements, frequently known as the rocking test, are essential. Rocking tests are carried out every six months in accordance with manufacturer's instructions. However, if wear is found close to tolerance, the test needs to be made more frequently. Additionally, class and flag state may require this test. For instance, Lloyd's Register reviewed the results of the rocking test measurements during the annual thorough examination of cranes. A forthcoming new Solus regulation will also include a requirement that cranes shall be operationally tested, thoroughly examined, inspected, operated and maintained. To obtain meaningful data, it is important that the correct method of testing is always followed. Procedures vary according to manufacturer. The following are common to all. Vessel trim to even keel with zero list. Calm sea and minimum wind. No cargo or bunkering operation. No load on the crane. Calibrated gauge is available. Readings need to be taken from fixed reference points which are normally internal but can be external. Leading manufacturers set out that two points need to be marked, one directly under the centre of the jib and the other opposite this. A machined surface is often furnished for this purpose. Other manufacturers may set out different requirements. Individual manufacturers' procedures can vary and you should follow those issued for the cranes fitted on board. The method set out by leading makers is as follows. Measurements need to be taken accurately and recorded from four positions, with the jib forward, to starboard, aft and to port. Initially, jib should be at maximum outreach and readings taken at both reference points A and B. If the difference in readings exceeds the set limit, then the crane needs to be immediately removed from service. Providing the difference is within limits, the jib is then luffed to minimum outreach. A second reading is then taken from the reference point B. If this reading is equal to or greater than the initial reading, then retake first measurements. The difference is compared with manufacturer's limits, and if this has been exceeded, again the crane must be removed from service. The difference can also be compared with previous test readings to establish a trend.